Hi, okay, this one is for Susan Powell. Um, I had very limited, if any, information going into this from the person requesting this information, just her name, and uh, that was it. So here's what I got. Um, okay, young female, late 20s to maybe early 30s, married. I did feel children, and I also got a pregnancy. Um, which she was not particularly excited about. Excited might be the wrong word for that. It just felt this marriage or relationship was something that I needed to disentangle myself from. So that was not the greatest news. Um, I did see her being at home. I did feel a friend there, a friend, but it was an older female, perhaps closer to my age, in the mid to late 50s. Um, felt husband and two children being there. These were younger children felt to me under five, but I'm not particularly certain of that. Um, coming in from some place, like maybe shopping with this woman, coming in, I think the husband is absolutely involved in this. I absolutely saw him as being the offender. Um, he, he, I'm going to go into him just for a slight minute. I did not care for this person at all. The narcissism and the sense of being smarter than everyone, there was almost a sense of accountability that he expected from other people that he did not expect from himself entitled entitled is the best word to use to describe the husband in all of this felt very detached emotionally unable to emotionally attach to people just a really uh, would not have made a very good spouse or partner in any stretch of the imagination um, did get that Susan was primarily carrying the, the family. I don't know if this is financially, but like I felt a lot of responsibility and burden placed on her. And again, wanting really being very conflicted with her religious or spiritual views about whether to stay in this marriage. But I do almost feel that a decision had been made before she was killed to actually leave this marriage and figure out how to do it. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was a divorce attorney well, I, people knew it, it just feels like at least a family member or two knew maybe the older female that I saw her with. So going back to the evening that I feel that this happened, I'm coming home from somewhere with this woman. There's a kitchen table. Like there's some, that feels like a meeting spot of the family. It did feel like an open plan, like an open family room. So maybe dining kitchen, um, dining area, living combined because there's a lots of toys in the living area. And what particularly caught my eye was a white twister board, you know, like where you'd put your feet on these things. And that was very close to the couch. Um, the husband planned, this was definitely, definitely, definitely planned. Um, I do feel that some kind of maybe decongestant or something that would make you sleepy. So maybe an antihistamine, um, something was introduced through food. Uh, eating, I'm just starting to not feel right, like a little bit dizzy. That feels in a very abbreviated amount of time. I don't know if it was 10 or 15 minutes, but I feel conversation with people around the table. So the husband and children, and then like I'm slowing, slurring my words or slowing down a little bit. Um, kind of like, I don't feel right. Not really thinking that there was anything going on with the food that I ate. It just feels not quite the flu, but like drugged slightly. I'm getting up and again, I'm going to give that about 10 or 15 minutes after ingesting whatever it was that she did. Kind of starting to stumble. Kids are kind of at my hips and feet and knees, you know, trying to get my attention. I'm going toward the couch that has the twister board in front of it. Um, and then I really do feel an impact. And then I also feel something around my throat or neck. I think children witness this. Oh, it's almost like I can't breathe. So she wanted to hit the couch, but I don't think she made it to the couch. I think dad just said, this is a game that we're playing. I see kids kind of not recoiling backwards, but like this doesn't feel like play. Um, she's just down and deceased at that point. That whole period from ingestion to, to death, it doesn't feel, it, that feels very abbreviated to me. So again, I'm going to go within 30 minutes is the time period for that. Um, now I'm starting to get a little nervous, but I feel like my plan has worked and I'm going back to being the husband now. Like, let's set this in motion. So again, I don't want to be too certain on the time, but I would go between 8, 8.30, 9 p.m. in the evening 
Um, I kind of felt distracting the kids, trying to get everything together. I think he rolled her up in this or covered her up. And again, voiced this to the children that this was just a game or we're just playing. I do feel the older child feels male would have been aware that this was not right. Like something about this wasn't right. Um, hold on, maybe she vomited because I, I don't know. I'm just feeling some kind of body fluid having to be cleaned up, like shampooed out. Interesting, the husband is really grossed out by that, which serves him right. So I do feel that was cleaned in some way. She doesn't feel like a particularly petite woman, so I'm not sure how he was able to kind of maneuver her body out of that position. Um, I do not feel any contact with his family at this point, but again, it does feel highly planned that this was going to happen. Like there is a plan behind this, and I think it was planned for nine months, and maybe there were different ways. Well, I'll try this or that. This is what he settled on. And I kind of just feel giddy, his giddiness that it worked. And then I feel this sense of superiority with him. I'm seeing getting the kids like bundled up dressed. They have pajamas on underneath their clothes. Now we're getting closer to 11 p.m. So kids should definitely be in bed. It's cold. Um, I'm putting things into a vehicle and I'm kind of rolling her in that direction. He just again not feel like a strong individual to me. So I'm loading this up. She's in the back compartment. I don't know if that's trunk or back of a vehicle. I just do not know. I'm driving, garage doors open, close it. Light had to come on in the indoor of the garage. Um, then I'm taking off and going out of the neighborhood, turning right, going up to some highways. And I feel like I'm going north and then I'm going west. Then I'm only going west for a very short amount of time. I think there is a thought at that point to maybe dispose of her body there. But this is such an abbreviated amount of miles from when I'm going north to west. And again, feeling highway does feel Salt Lake City, big area like that. Um, that going, going, leaving her in that short period west feels like not doable. And I think he realizes that. So then I'm actually now turning left and going south. So South Down, this feels less populated in this area. I'm seeing more smaller little cities so that you can kind of drive through. Maybe there's two, three, four lights. Very small population in that area. I'm seeing some churches. I know this area. I have been in this area. I've kind of planned these spots. It feels kind of desert. There's some mountains in the view. I feel like I'm maybe going 15, 20 miles down that road. Um, on my left-hand side, so south, so if I'm going south, that would be southwest or east, pardon me, southeast. So pulling off southeast, there's a big tree. I think I've passed a cemetery of some sort, but it feels old. And I believe when I did this for the client, I, I saw that it was maybe not a person cemetery, but maybe something for animals. Um, going in that, there's a pull-off in that area, very dark very quiet. I kind of, there's just no sound, although I do hear wind. Feels very close to a camping spot, kind of pulling her out of this. I do not know how he would have done this because at this point he's carrying dead weight with her. I'm maybe walking 200 feet or so. There's an area like on a mesa with a lot of rocks, a lot of rocks. It looks like it may go down, but you'd have to dig it out. I think he got that spot wrong leaving your body there. Then as I'm walking back to the vehicle, I, I just feel exuberant, elated. Like I can't, I, of course I got away with this. My mental superiority, of course, won the day on this. Um, my plan worked. It's kind of that very haughty nature with the husband. Um, pulling out of this area and I'm going left again. So continuing on south, I'm not going north the, the way that I came in. I'm going south again. And I feel like this would have been an area where I could maybe say I have an alibi. So from where her body is dropped to where the alibi station is would be less than five miles. It doesn't feel maybe twist and turns along that, but it does not feel like it's a great deal away. So there's like a less than 10 mile proximity from where he stated that he ended up to where her body is. And I'm being generous with that. It really feels closer to three to five miles. Um, lots of fencing, but it's like wire fencing, maybe something for cattle. So it's, there's some gaps in all of that fencing. I mean, people might have seen it, maybe one or two people would notice recalling the car. 
I feel like I'm there for several hours, kind of making up stories to the children of what happened. Um, feels like very magical thinking that I'm trying to impress upon the children. It's freaking freezing. So wherever this is, like, it is cold in this environment. People are bundled up, but I still see breath, uh, like their breath. Couple hours, maybe it's almost daylight, five five thirty. Something I'm beginning to head back. Could even be a little bit later than that. I feel this person would have been praying and thinking that like, again, God is on my side. It's just so bizarre to get that. Um, then, like the rest of this is just my alibi. I'm just doing my alibi, my alibi, my alibi. 